So tonight's four-star accommodation is Walmart <laughs> in San Angelo. It should be fine. I'm just gonna go scope out the other side over here. And yeah, I should be able to just park overnight. I don't think they care. I do need to go in and get porta potty um thingamajigs. Oh I should have dumped my porta potty out. It didn't oh well. Um yeah, I, I'm uh I need like porta potty thingamajigs. Um the little freshness stuff. Okay, I think I'll just park here on the side. That should be fine. Good morning from San Angelo, Texas. And I parked at this apartment complex. <laughs> I moved out of the um Walmart. I went to bed at 9:30 moved out of the Walmart at 10 because there were a bunch of like street racers and people having like raves and their little Honda Civics. So there's like an Air Force base near here too. <laughs> so I was like, I'll just park here. This is really nice. It's very like ranch like there's like a little fence over there. Okay. So I'm going to go get a Starbucks and then I'm going to the San Angelo State Park. I have an eight mile hike this morning. It's going to get hot pretty quickly. And then I have an hour and a half drive to Abilene State Park where I think I only have a two mile hike and then I have a three and a half hour drive to the rest area and then tomorrow Mother Neff uh, State Park. So yeah, just kind of, you know, slowly making my way back to Houston and then I'll be back in Houston uh, tomorrow, which will be great. I'm getting tired. So, um, okay, cool. I, uh, yeah, let me get going. I'm gonna park at the trailhead. Oh, there's a cool little park, that's fun. So yeah, this is the trailhead up here. This is nice. This is very much your um, central Texas landscape. Very flat, no shade. And this is really good for mountain biking apparently. So I'm gonna park here in the sun and the trail starts right over here. And there's, that's a cool little park. Harriet would love that. I would love that. I mean, come on, they have a tire swing. <laughs> All right, park in the sun. And yeah, I think there's only one other person here. Here's the trail map for San Angelo State Park. Oh, this looks like mountain biking would be fun. It looks like you can mountain bike everywhere. So I'm going to do an eight mile loop of this. So I should hit most of these trails. It's nice to be back in Texas where they have these beautiful trail maps. Ah, oh, so great. And I guess they have a lake as well. Most of these um, uh, state parks have lakes, but mosquitoes and the heat and no shade but the only place I really paddleboard is Austin so far um, but when I you know repack and clean Prudence which she needs a good clean I'm going to um, put my paddleboard in there and hopefully can get some paddleboarding when I head north um, okay so I'm going to just quickly do this hike it's eight miles so it should probably take me about just over two hours and then it's uh, 72 degrees it's overcast and it's starting to get a little bit hot, so I'm going to start. So yeah, back to Texas with the humidity. <laughs> uh, it's good to be back though. And this is, I think, my 76th or something state park at 89. I don't know. I got to count. I got a list that I have to check off. The thing about the uh, hill country and central Texas hikes is that you have a lot of this bedrock and it's very, very rocky. So mountain biking, you know, either get the tires that don't go flat or get really good suspension. Um, when Jeff rebuilt my mountain bike, we put um, air shocks, rock shocks on the front of my, uh, the front fork. So, <laughs> you know, replaced it and put that there. It is humid. Oh my God, I'm having a hard time breathing. I miss my desert that isn't Texas. This is beautiful though. Yeah, it's still winter. <laughs> oh, there's little butterflies. Oh, they're so pretty. You see them? They're like these little green butterflies. They look like little flying four leaf, four leaf clovers. Super pretty. Okay, up and onward. Actually, this isn't too bad for mountain biking. This is doable. This is no different than uh, Rift Valley single track trail. Yeah, I need to get my mountain bike. I am long overdue for mountain biking in a trail. I haven't done it at all this year. I've only ridden in uh, Houston. So this is the uh, required clothing. <laughs> Or hiking in Texas. Sun hat, wide brimmed hat. I wear my mountain biking gloves and then I have a long sleeve shirt and leggings I guess, workout leggings, uh, hiking boots and socks. So I am fully covered. Oh and a, and a scarf uh, just for extra neck protection from the sun and also if I have to cover my whole head for any reason <laughs> or if there's dust, the dust storms, I can cover my face. 
So yeah, so this is my general little hiking outfit here. And yeah, you gotta protect your skin. I think it's like the largest organ in your body or something. I don't know, <laughs> anyway. Okay, so up and onward. I'm trying to do this quickly and I'm going slow, so I need to go faster. You know you're in Texas when there's a trail called the Winding Snake. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. This is the day use area and it looks like there's a dam on the other side over there. So the lake maybe is a reservoir. That's pretty cool. I saw one mountain biker so far. Although this is super rocky, this is the kind of stuff that I actually prefer riding on. Uh, I'm not really much of a street rider, even though when I'm home, I do a 23 mile loop from my house to uh, downtown Houston along the bayou and then back through like the fancy neighborhood of River Oaks. Um, and that's, you know, it takes me like an hour and 45 minutes to do that. Um, but yeah, this is what I much prefer. And a lot of it, like I'm not trying to be a hero when I do my mountain biking, so I don't, um, I don't ride up really rocky bits or down really rocky bits because I don't really need to go head over the, you know, handlebars because this rock is, is pretty, pretty strong. This is the karma gods telling me to get my mountain bike. Anytime you see roller coaster, you know that's a pump track. Oh my God. I need my mountain bike. It's actually a really, really nice walk. Not much of a hike. I mean, there's really no elevation change, but it is pretty and there's lots of butterflies and flowers. But yeah, so now I'm gonna continue on to Lanky Lackey and the roller coaster. So the loop I'm doing is on all trails and it connects a bunch of different trails like Chaparral to Lanky Lackey to roller coaster and so on. Um, so it's 8.2 miles and yeah, I'm about maybe a third of the way through, almost halfway through. So yeah, it'll probably take me over two hours. I'm not going very fast because it is quite hot. Um, but there are bathrooms along the way. And yeah, so this is nice. I think I'm going the right way. Actually going the wrong way. I have to go toward this little art installation over here. Um, cross over the road. Yeah, so I'm not going to the roller coaster, but if I was on my mountain bike, I would. This is really pretty. I actually enjoy the central and west Texas kind of like openness. It's like, it's kind of like the high desert, but very like green. Although in the summer, this is all brown and dead. There's one other person there. Yeah, this is cute. Whatever this is over here. So those over there, I think they're Kiowa trees. They have them in Palo Duro Canyon and they're always just kind of in this little cluster. And they're so pretty, really like bright green. I don't know, the camera doesn't do it justice. But yeah, as you can see, it's just kind of this open plain. And uh, I'll be heading toward Abilene after this. And that's kind of like toward, you know, like all the oil and stuff. So um, west of us is Midland Odessa. And that's like the big, big um, like oil field. It's called the Permian Basin, which is pretty much most of West Texas is where they do the drilling. And if you see some of these like you know, like worker camps, it's like really depressing. But, you know, people work out there six months of the year to, you know, longer because the money is good, you know, compared to where they would have options, you know, wherever they live. So my dad worked in oil for his whole life, pretty much built offshore oil rigs and stuff and drilling and all that. Um, so he was a civil engineer. Um, so I kind of have a, you know, little connection. And they used to live in, my parents used to live in Texas, in North Houston, they had a ranch and I have cousins in Amarillo that are rodeo, you know, and, and horse riders and stuff. So yeah, a little bit of a Texas connection, even though I don't sound like I'm from Texas. <laughs> Actually, we have a lot of British people in Houston uh, because of the uh, oil and gas. Yeah, I don't know what these are, but they have these little leaves and they're super cute. So I'll have to look it up. Um, but the uh, in Paladuro, the trail where these trees are on is called the Kiowa Trail. So I don't know if that has to do with the name of the trees. I'm not good at plants. I'm better at rocks. I took a rocks class in college. Um, we called it Docs Rocks or, or uh, uh, was it a uh, Rocks for Jocks? And it was earth science. And if I wasn't doing what I do for a living now, which is, you know, a bunch of stuff, I'm actually going to do some videos on all my jobs before van life. Um, and so like I, my, my digital career and my travel career have been consistent, um, but I've had a ton of like weird, obscure, odd jobs here and there uh, during my downtime or time off or friends that are like, hey, can you, you know, do this job, this job? So it'll be fun to like talk about kind of all the, all the different things I've done. 
um, outside of like my actual, you know, profession, um, which is, you know, don't always just stay within, you know, what you studied. Be okay with getting some side hustles or trying something new for a little bit. You know, it's like just multiple sources of revenue. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's been, it's been a trip. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so if I wasn't doing digital media journalism, side hustles, dressing up in costumes, trying to be a YouTube micro influencer, uh, I would be a geologist. <laughs> so to be honest, like I love rocks. I love terrain and elevation and sediment. So I would absolutely, I'm, I'm not an archeologist. I wouldn't be like digging for fossils cause I just hate manual labor. Um, but I would, I would be a geologist. Okay, now I'm heading to the roller coaster, which in mountain bike terms is usually like a pump track or something. So I'm guessing there's gonna be some elevation and I was right. Awesome. I need to work my legs. Come on legs. All right. on the um, camera but there's so many butterflies look at that one and this one <laughs> there go. they're going so fast I've seen probably about 20 different kinds of butterflies I've never ever been on a hike where I've seen so many so many little fluttery little friends and just for the record for um, future reference my favorite butterfly is a monarch um, my favorite insect is a dragonfly, and my favorite dinosaur is a brontosaurus because all he wants is a salad. I'm back at the trailhead and Prudence is over there. There's the uh, park host and Texas Park and Wildlife. It's good to be back. I do enjoy all the other states I was in on this trip, but it is good to be back in the Texas Park Service. They really do have their shit together. <laughs> so I was always joking, like, park rangers for president. So... Okay, that's proof. I'm gonna um, do some housekeeping and uh, then head on my way. So, housekeeping in that, I need to uh, dump out my toilet. <laughs> so, that's what I'm gonna do. Ooh, rock scary. Oh no, so hard. Oh my god, I'm gonna fall. That is a fun park if it wasn't like a thousand million degrees right now. Yeah, nothing like sitting on super hot burning plastic on the swing. Okay, I'm gonna climb over this bit. Oh no, so scary. <laughs> All right, Prue. Well, that was good. That was super fun. Thank you for joining me. And I'm going to head over to Abilene right now. So it should be a short hike. I'll add it onto this video. And then, uh, yeah, probably not a lot there. Okay. Beautiful flowers. Beautiful van. I'm at Abilene State Park. And apparently the big storm's coming in. And it's going to rain nonstop from about this afternoon until uh, tomorrow evening. So I think I'm probably going to go toward Austin, which isn't the best choice. Um, but if I can get to Austin tonight and then drive on another hour to Columbus and stay at the Columbus rest area, I'm only like, you know, uh, 45 minutes or an hour from home. I just don't want to go to home, like home tonight because I'll get in by midnight. So anyway, let's see, I've got to do... Okay. Hi, I have a, a reservation for day use for Jennifer Timer. Okay. So I think I'm just going to stay, just do this hike. It's sunny and breezy and 70 degrees and then go toward Mother Neff. I don't know if I'll do it. I mean, I'm still four hours from home if I'm in Waco. If I go to Austin, I'm only like two and a half hours from home. So we'll see. I'll see what the, uh, whether the weather predictions are true or if they're just, you know, BSing on Fox News. Okay. Uh, hiking map, please. Great, thank you. I don't watch Fox News, but the Fox Weather Channel is actually pretty decent. <laughs> so I used to work for Fox uh, Studios, like the movie industry, um, back in the day. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I don't watch. <laughs> okay, I don't do politics. But the Fox Weather Station on YouTube is actually pretty informative. And this really cool building, which I think is a restaurant. <laughs> okay, the trail that I'm doing is over here in the main part of the park. You can also go the other 3.5 miles on the dam road. 
which just looks like it's a horse trail mountain biking. Um, so yeah, so this is the trail that I'm doing on all trails and it is two miles. So yeah, short and sweet. And then I need to figure out where the heck I'm going because it's gonna rain. So it doesn't look like it's gonna rain. It's actually quite a nice day. It's overcast though. And for some reason my Jackery isn't uh, charging on my solar panels anymore. Sorry for my socks. <laughs> Everything's drying in the sun. This is a neat little park. They have a swimming pool and they also have a park and then this tower, which I don't know what's in it. So I'm just gonna go straight. The trailhead should be on the other side of this thing over here. I think I should be able to go around, yeah. This is really pretty and there's like no one here <laughs> because it's a uh, Wednesday, I think. No, it's Thursday. It is Thursday all day today. So yeah, so I'm just gonna head toward um, the campsites and just follow my little map around right here. Okay, so I think, I think I just keep going. This is fun. <laughs> this is beautiful though. Gorgeous, gorgeous day. It's a shame there's a big hailstorm, tornado, rainstorm coming in tonight. So there's nowhere for me to go underneath. In Houston, I can go in the HEB supermarket parking lot. I can fit under it. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anywhere like I can go except under a tree and I don't really want to go under a tree. Okay, the trailhead starts here. So I'm gonna park right here and get started. It's only two miles. Okay, I'm all suited up. <laughs> Even though I'm doing a two mile hike, there's no point. Um, but safety third. And yeah, there's Prudence getting some sun. This is great, I'm the only one here. <laughs> so, again, when you don't have to be at work during the week, this is great. Um, yes, this is Abilene. And there's the map. And there's me next to the map. So yeah, literally, I am right here in this armadillo and I saw on somebody's channel where they're like, it looks like a rat and a um, elephant like had a child. <laughs> so, and now all I see is a rat elephant. So anyway, I'm gonna start here and I'm going to do whatever all trails tells me to do. Two miles around this area and I'm not gonna go all the way up here. If I had my mountain bike, I would, but I think it's just a dirt road that goes to the dam. Okay, and of course, because we have a drought, area shown does not represent current lake levels. I mean, I've been to some state parks where there's like no water whatsoever. So in addition to looking for mobility friendly hikes, which is uh, one of these, this one right here, um, also places that are good for those that are, you know, living with PTSD or domestic violence survivors or people that need healing through nature. I also look for kid friendly hikes, and this is a very kid friendly park. Actually, a lot of the smaller Texas state parks are great for kids. The hikes are short. Uh, there's usually a river that you can paddle in. Um, just make sure you don't swim in the peeing section. <laughs> so, it's like someone said one time, uh, what is it? A smoking section of a restaurant is like a peeing section of a pool. Um, but anyway, so, and I highly agree with that. I cannot stand cigarette smoke. Um, I grew up with a smoker sister, unfortunately. <laughs> the whole house was smelling of cigarette smoke. It was just always the whole 80s in England. Everything was cigarette smoke. So thankfully my formative years were in the early 90s in California where they banned indoor smoking. So finally lucked out, but I couldn't imagine, I mean, with my back spasms and things trying to you know, get my breathing right. I can imagine like having to add emphysema on top of that. <laughs> so anyway, enough with the PSAs. We will have our preferences. But yeah, this is gorgeous. Really pretty. So it's actually about 10 or 15 degrees cooler here than it was where I was at um, about an hour and a half ago. So it's starting to cool down. The cold front's coming in according to the interwebs and it should start raining in about an hour. Doesn't look like it's gonna rain. But that's Texas. I mean, you, you know, blink and the weather changes. So yeah, let me see where I'm at. 0.2 miles in. This is nice. Actually, I'm, I'm digging doing like two hikes in a day. One big major hike and then a very short hike. When I went to Franklin Mountains, which is on a previous video, a couple of videos before this one, um, I went to, I did this eight mile, really, really like ass kicking hike to a tin mine. And then I did the very, very short, less than a mile hike in uh, Waco tanks. And that was good. That was a good way to break it up. And then I drove a long way <laughs> to get to the next place. Seven hours, I think, six hours. I think it was four hours. I don't know, I went to Big Bend uh, State Park and National Park. Okay, so this is the Elm Creek Trail and the Eagle Trail. 
and I'm just gonna go straight. following the old trails map and it's literally sending me through where people would be parked. I don't know if you could even see on my phone. I'm in the Brushy Trail campground and it doesn't look like there's any trail on that side so I think it's just going to send me down the road and then make a left turn onto another road but yeah I'm literally walking through people's campsites right now. Ouch. I'm kicking rocks at my feet. I'm taking a bit of a detour. The trail goes that way on all trails but I'm going to go through the bird blind loop and then come back out in the other campsite and yeah there's just probably add another I don't know quarter mile good morning it's 7 a.m on a Friday and I was gonna go to Mother Neff State Park and the weather looks pretty good but I need to go home <laughs> I'm tired and I need to do laundry um, yeah, I'm in Waco, just north of Waco, about three hours from home and two hours and 50 minutes from my storage unit, which is an hour from my house. So I was like, well, I could take the van to the RV garage, Uber home, get my car, drive back, pack up the van and come back. And that's a long time. <laughs> so I'm going to drive to my house, unload everything from the van, all my laundry, all my clothes, get all the water out, pick up the dehumidifier and then drive out to the RV storage park the van up and uh, take an Uber home. So that's usually what I do. So I'm gonna do that and that'll put me in Houston about 10.30 and then it'll give me about 30 minutes to quickly unload the van. I just need to take everything out that's gonna be like moisture or um, anything that's gonna create mold or mice or food or any of that stuff. So I got most of it packed up and then also my gigantic laundry basket, which is like three weeks worth of laundry so yeah I don't really need anything oh, I need to get my ice skates out as well so I don't really need anything else from the van um, just need to make sure I take all the food out um, and then yeah so I'll go back on uh, probably on Sunday afternoon I'll go back and, and just kind of evaluate and start cleaning and working on the van um, I do need to do some upgrades to the bed area I just want to make it look a little prettier um, I do need to figure out a different like mattress topper because this is a couch bed and there's a bit of the fold of the couch that's kind of like hurting my back and my back already hurts <laughs> as it is. Um, so I'm going to look into getting like a memory foam. I need to fix the cabinet, which I think I did. I just need to reinforce everything so that it's not so jittery. Um, and then I just need to do a good scrub down. Um, the floors need cleaning. I need to get in there and get all the little, you know, bits of mud and dust. Um, but other than that, the van's in pretty good shape. I need to get the bearings checked. I can't even speak this morning. The bearings checked. Um, so there's like a whoa, 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 like kind of a whoa, like noise like that when I'm driving. Um, it gets, it's loud under 40 miles an hour and it goes away if I'm over 40 miles an hour. So I think it's the bearings. Um, I also need to get the suspension checked, which I knew about in January. Um, but it wasn't a major player, so after all the questionable roads I've been on, I'm going to um, get that checked out. So I've got three weeks. I was going to travel, not next week, but the week after. So um, I, hopefully I can just drop the van off this week, or next week rather. It's Friday today. So I can drop the van off Monday and then just pick it up at the end of the week. Um, I'm not too bothered. It's actually fine to invest in this van now because for what I bought it for, versus what it's worth. Um, we are unicorns. <laughs> so it's worth a little bit more than I bought, not very much more, but um, enough to justify keeping it well maintained. Plus, you know, it's like I rotate the tires every 3000 miles. I need to get oil change. I'm a couple hundred miles out, uh, outside of the oil change right now, which is fine. I do it every 3000 miles. So I have a buffer up to 5000. And then um, of course I put new wheels, new tires, um, I had the brakes redone, I had all the transmission and everything that they gave me on the list redone. So that was pretty pricey, but it's worth it. Um, and so now I need to just get the suspension checked and mostly the, the bearings, because I think there's just, you know, some things have been worn away just from driving 118,000 miles. So, uh, but other than that, you know, just, uh, yeah, the van's really good. So just got to do a good clean down, 
probably go through, I gotta put some more Beatles decor up and I gotta go through and, and take out anything that I'm not using. There's a couple things in the Tupperware containers in my storage closet that I don't really need or use. Um, yeah, so it's just, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home and sleep in tomorrow. I'm not setting my alarm. It's nice to be home, not for just a day. That's what it was the last couple of months. I would fly home for a day because um, I had to see Harriet and then uh, fly back to San Diego to help Jeff. But now everything's stable, so I'm just gonna get a few things done over the next couple of weeks and then figure out what I'm doing then. Um, I don't know if I'll be working, I don't know. We have to figure this out. It's just, you know, a lot of, a lot of decisions, but it was a good trip. I'm glad I took my time getting back to Houston. I've wanted to go through Bisbee, which I love. It's a great town. I made a new friend and uh, yeah, just going through Tombstone and I just really lucked out. The weather was great. It wasn't too busy and I got to do everything I wanted to do, except, you know, a couple hikes I got kind of like zero for three on the hikes in Arizona just because the roads were too bad. Um, but there's, you know, a couple redos that I can do if I'm down in that area. So it's not a total loss. Um, and I saw a big hole in the ground. <laughs> the media crater was pretty, pretty crazy. That was fun. Okay. Oh, get on the road. I got a three hour drive home. Tired. I slept well though. I stayed up a little late last night on my computer, just, you know, sorting videos out and stuff. I should have just gone to bed, but I wasn't really, I was kind of winding down. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I'm just gonna head out. I'm at the rest area right now. And uh, yeah, this is a fantastic rest area. One of the best. I mean, it's like freeway noise, but that's ambient noise. I live in a city, I hear the freeway all the time. So that doesn't bother me. But yeah, I was just parked at the end and uh, yeah, no one bothered me or anything. So I've actually slept pretty well on this trip. I haven't had any undisturbed sleep. Um, I picked some pretty good spots. So yeah, can't believe just a week and a half ago I was in Catalina, or no, uh, uh, Channel Islands. Seems like forever ago. Okay, all right, I'm gonna head back and that's it. So I'll see you back in Houston. Thank you.